In the last video, we looked at how to work with the mole concept. And in this video, we're going to take it a little bit further here. It's very important to be able to calculate the percent mass in a compound. We just said that, for example, in our last video, we calculated that aluminum oxide has that overall total formula mass of 101.96. Well, to find the percent mass for each element, we just take each individual's each individual element's uh, mass value and divide it by the total. So for aluminum here, we take the 53.96 and divide it by the total, the 101.96. Of course, multiply that by 100 and you get 52.92%. And do the same thing for the oxygen. Take the 48.00 and divide it by the total and you get 47.08%. That means if you have a sample of, let's say, 100 grams of aluminum oxide, 52.92 grams of that, 52.92% would be aluminum, and the rest would be oxygen. So that's how we can uh, determine the percent mass in a compound. We can do that for any compound. So in this case, magnesium nitrate. For magnesium, we just take you know, each of those individual values and divide them by the total, and you find magnesium is 16.39%, nitrogen is 18.89%, and oxygen is 64.72%. And it doesn't have to be ionic. You can do this for the molecular compounds we talked about as well in the last video. So in the case of water, you know, hydrogen would be about 2.02 divided by your 18.02, about 11 0.2%. The same thing for, for oxygen. The 16 divided by the total gets you about 88.8%. Of course, to check your work, you can add up your percents, and your percent should add up to 100% or something very, very close to that. For the sucrose, we do the same thing. Just take each of your individual uh, totals for your uh, individual elements and divide them by the total, and you get the percent of each element in the compound by mass. A very useful uh, a little calculation to do for, uh, for your uh, compounds. Now, we're going to do some other uh, conversions here with uh, the mole concept. In this problem, we have a 33.9 gram sample of aluminum oxide. And the question is, how many formula units are we going to have here? Well, we always start by writing down what's given to us, the 33.9 grams of aluminum oxide. So we write that down. And as you see here in the, the note here, always convert to moles first. If you have multiple steps, convert to moles. Or like I sometimes say, all roads lead to moles. So convert to moles first. And we're going to have formula units down here at the end, but we're converting to moles first. That means grams have to go on the bottom because that's what we're trying to get rid of. And one mole on top. How many grams are in one mole of aluminum oxide? Well, we figured that out in an earlier slide. We saw it was 101.96 grams, didn't we? So we can cancel the grams. And now we're going from moles to formula units. So in our next conversion factor, it'll be one mole on the bottom. And how many formula units are in a mole? Well, it's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So we can cancel moles. And on our calculator, we type in 33.9 divided by 101.96 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Just as a reminder, if the number is in the numerator, you multiply by that number. If it's in the denominator, you divide by that number. And so when you key it in, you should get an answer of about 2.00 times 10 to the 23rd formula units. Now let's try another example. How about this one here? In grams, what is the mass of one molecule of water? Well, it's not 18.02 grams. I'll tell you that, because 18.02 uh, grams is the mass of one mole of water, not one molecule. So we have to do a conversion here. I, I start by writing down one molecule of water and says, what is the mass? And so that means we have to convert to grams down here at the end. And since we have multiple steps, 
What unit do we convert to first? Moles, right? All roads lead to moles. So we're going to put molecules on the bottom and one mole on the top. And we know that there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules in one mole. We're going to cancel molecules. And now we're going to go from moles to grams. And so in our next step, mole on the bottom and grams on the top. And how many grams are in one mole of water? Well, you might remember, or you can add it up using the periodic table. Two hydrogens and one oxygen gets you about 18.02 grams in one mole. So we cancel that out, and we take one divided by Avogadro's number times 18.02, and we get an answer of about 2.99 times 10 to the negative 23rd grams of water. That's a very small number. And that makes sense because if we're trying to find the mass of one molecule of water, it should be a very, very small number. Always uh, double check your answers whenever you work through these. Make sure that your answer makes sense. Here's another good question. How many hydrogen atoms are contained within 1.00 grams of water? Well, once again, we're starting with one gram of water and this time we're being asked about atoms of hydrogen so that's going to be our our unit we have at the end and we have obviously multiple steps because we can't go directly from grams to atoms so what do we convert to first always convert to moles first all roads lead to moles so grams will go on the bottom and one mole on top how many grams are in a mole of that compound well, we just used it in the last problem, didn't we? 18.02. So we have that. Grams are out. And now we're in moles of water. What do we convert to next? Well, maybe we need to switch over because we're going from what we're starting with water and we're talking about hydrogen here at the end. So let's let's go from, from water to hydrogen. So I'm going to put water on the bottom and hydrogen on the top. Now if you look at the formula for water, it's H2O. That little two there tells us that there are two hydrogen atoms in every one water molecule. Two H's in every one water. Now this is called a mole ratio and we're going to do a lot of this here uh, later on. But this is our first example of this. So we're going to have two H's to one water. That's, that's the ratio here, two to one. So I'm going to cancel out my water. And now I'm in moles of hydrogen. I want to be in atoms of hydrogen. So now I can go from moles to atoms by putting one mole on the bottom and Avogadro's number of atoms on the top. When I cancel moles, now I can calculate this. I've got the 1.00 divide by 18.02 times 2 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So when you key this into your calculator, your answer should be somewhere pretty close to 6.68 times 10 to the 22nd atoms of water. Once again, a very large number. That makes sense because we're asking about how many atoms are in there. I hope you learned something from my video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. I hope to see you again as we move on to Unit 1, Section 2.